Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Rafah Palace Deputy Prime Ministers His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that Bahrain's proactive steps and procedures taken to combat the coronavirus contributed to achieving positive results and reassured citizens, adding that there is great hope in overcoming this circumstance thanks to the awareness and solidarity of citizens and residents. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his directives that enhanced social awareness and strengthened its resolve in facing this crisis. Noting the efforts and continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to prevent the spread of the virus. The Prime Minister directed ministries and specialized government authorities to increase preparations and precautions that reassure the public on the general health state situation, calling to adopt effective measures that prevent the spread of the virus, especially among expatriate workers, by tightening control and regulatory procedures in their homes. His Royal Highness reviewed the government's latest efforts in combating the virus at the health, economic and service levels and followed up on his directives regarding supporting the educational process and private schools cooperation with parents as well as providing and monitoring various consumer goods and controlling prices. In addition to examining expatriate workers and other directives that contribute to providing and meeting citizens' requirements, His Royal Highness hailed the community partnership and the response of citizens and residents to precautionary instructions to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, pointing out that all the precautionary measures that were taken and applied are aimed at protecting the safety and health of citizens and residents. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the cooperation and awareness of Bahraini citizens and for adhering to precautionary measures. His Royal Highness commended the efforts and steps taken by ministries and institutions to combat the virus, highlighting the efforts of the Ministry of Health and all its medical and nursing staff for their sacrifices. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a telephone call from the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, in which he congratulated His Royal Highness on his safe return to the Kingdom of Bahrain following his recovery. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, expressed his sincere thanks and appreciation to President Abbas for his noble sentiments, wishing him abundant health and happiness, and to the Palestinian people prosperity and growth. The Shura Council held its first remote sessions within the framework of supporting preventative measures and national efforts to combat the coronavirus. And following the instructions issued by the Coordinating Committee to Combat COVID-19, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. This session comes as part of the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Salah Al Salah's directive to ensure that the Council continues to perform its work during these exceptional health conditions, where a number of legislations were discussed and approved. Today we had for the first time uh, our meeting uh, run uh, using uh, new technology. It was uh, it went very well. We had uh, all the members attending from either from home or from uh, specific rooms uh, assigned to them in the in the in the in the Medicine Shura building. Uh, we discussed three laws. We approved two of them, and the third we reached uh, half of it, and we'll, we should complete uh, the law uh, next week. Uh, the good thing that all the members felt easy dealing with technology, using technology in the discussions, and we really didn't feel that there was any limitation in the right of our members to discuss or to, uh, to, 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 to uh, bring their ideas and thoughts. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, has ordered the extension of the ongoing curfew until further notice. The order was announced by an official source at the Saudi Ministry of Interior late yesterday. The ministry called on everyone nationwide to comply with the royal order in a bid to maintain their health and safety, while underlining that all special precautions already in place in cities, governance, and residential areas would remain unchanged. 
Saudi Arabia reported 382 new coronavirus cases, raising the total number of confirmed cases in the kingdom to 4,033. The Saudi Ministry of Health has announced five new virus-related deaths, raising the number of fatalities to 52. The number of daily confirmed cases in Saudi Arabia has not reached the peak yet, and cases continue to rise at a rapid level. Kuwaiti Minister of Health, uh, Sheikh Dr. Basil Al Sabah, announced today the recovery of nine uh, cases from the novel coronavirus COVID 19, raising the country's total recoveries to 142. The minister said lab tests and analysis had shown the recovery of the patients, adding that the already treated cases will be admitted to a rehabilitation ward before being discharged from the hospital. He has also reported 80 new confirmed cases during the past 24 hours, bringing the total number of registered cases in Kuwait to 1,234. The Kuwaiti Ministry of Health pointed out that one case is related to traveling and 71 cases were in contact with previous infected cases, while the other eight cases are under epidemiological surveillance. The ministry added that 29 patients are receiving intensive care while 1,091 cases are receiving treatment at hospitals. The United Arab Emirates reported 376 new cases, raising the total number of cases in the country to 3,736. The Ministry of Health spokeswoman Farid Al Husseini announced that four people have died from the virus today, bringing the total number of virus related fatalities in the UAE to 20. She added that the new cases were discovered after 20,000 tests were conducted on both citizens and residents across the country, noting that they are all currently stable. The number of daily reported cases in the UAE has not peaked yet, but the rate of infections or infections has slowed. The number of recoveries in the UAE rose to 588 after 170 people recovered from the virus. The Sultanate of Oman has announced the discovery of 53 new cases of the coronavirus COVID-19, bringing the total number of infections to 599. According to the Oman News Agency, the number of cases recovering from the coronavirus was at 109, with three deaths. Here's Yasmin Ibrahim with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,297,023 points, marking a decrease of 3.14 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector, investment sector, services sector, and industrial sector. 70 equity transactions took place with a volume of 9,018,836,000 worth 1,845,827 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 91.22% of the total value of securities traded. The number of Americans getting on airplanes has sunk to a level not seen more than 60 years as people shelter in their homes to avoid catching or spreading the new virus. The Transportation Security Administration screened less than 100,000 people a day this week, a drop of 96% from a year ago. Airlines have drastically cut the number of flights to match demand and save cash, but even with far fewer flights, most seats are empty. United Airlines says it is losing $100 million a day. Delta Airlines says it is burning $60 million a day. All the leading U.S. carriers have applied for federal grants to cover payroll costs through September, and some are likely to seek federal loans or loan guarantees. 
The Toyota chief executive is promising that the Japanese auto industry will seek to protect jobs worldwide as it braces to overcome the unfolding crisis set off by the pandemic. Speaking as head of the Japan Automi Automobile Manufacturers Association, the chief executive said that he was worried that the Japanese economy might be destroyed before the world can win the fight against the virus. JAMA brings together Japanese automakers, including Nissan and Honda, as well as parts makers. It plans to set up a special fund to help people laid off find new jobs. A deal between OPEC and nations including Russia to boost oil prices involves a 10 million barrels per day cut until July, then an 8 million barrels per day cut through the end of the year. The cartel, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, says Mexico's refusal to agree blocked the proposal. Mexico has yet to respond, though the deal comes as prices have been gutted by the pandemic and the illness it causes. Analysts warn even these proposed cuts may not be enough to offset the loss in demand. OPEC said that the deal also calls for a 6 million barrel per day cut for 16 months beginning in 2021. Governments from the 19 countries that use the euro overcame sharp differences to agree on measures that could provide more than half a trillion euros for companies, workers and health systems to cushion the economic impact of the virus outbreak. The ministers agreed that the hard-pressed governments such as Spain and Italy could quickly tap the eurozone's bailout fund for up to 240 billion euros with the condition that the money is spent on their health care systems and the credit line expires after the outbreak is over. The agreement also provides for up to 200 billion euros in credit guarantees through the European Investment Bank to keep companies afloat and 100 billion euros to make up lost wages for workers put on shorter hours. And finally, before we conclude our business, uh, business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. That is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Sara. Thank you, Yasmin. A London painter is turning isolation into art by preserving the views from people's windows during lockdown on canvas. Most people might be bored of the view from their windows, particularly those under lockdown to hold the spread of COVID-19. But 37-year-old painter Frank Laws is turning isolation into art, and it turns out everyone wants a copy. What began as an attempt to pass the time and earn some extra money after losing his freelance job has now turned into a full-time under taking. Laws is painting people's isolation views using smartphone pictures emailed to him from around the world. He says it has helped him deal with his own isolation, giving him a routine every day. His studio isn't far from his East London flat, but he hasn't been traveling there. He now hopes to paint about 100 and eventually stage an exhibit.